the news this week. Nigerian youths react to passage of not too young to run bail at the National Assembly. Video evidence reveals that the guards are indeed crazy. Two prominent politicians resolved to settle their dispute in a mature fashion. And now, it's the other news. And here's your host, O.K. Bakasi. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the show that looks serious news straight in the eye and tickles it. It's the other news. Our guest um, has been the advisor to presidents. She's a politician and philanthropist. Floris Etagiwa is in the house, ladies and gentlemen. A round of applause. All right. Also on the show, also on the show is Dan the Humorous. And he brings us the latest from the Federal Capital Territory. We take a special look at the constitutional amendment process and lots more. But first, it's the other news headlines. Akwaibom State Governor Udom Emmanuel says the visit by governors to President Buhari was an attempt to show the president that they love him, even if they are in opposition. <laughs> well, pressed for more details, he giggled shyly and said, well, what happens in London stays in London. Yeah. In Abuja, a house belonging to ex-president Goodluck Jonathan has been boggled, allegedly by the policemen who were supposed to be guarding it. The former president issued this statement in response. If you leave a goat and a yam or a plantain together, it's good to eat. What you have to do if you, make sure, if you want to make sure that the goat does not eat the yam. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yeah, as an German, the president had to add plantain there. I was surprised he didn't add fish. <laughs> All right. Now, when an old man is in a relationship or marries a young woman. Very few eyebrows, if any at all, are raised. And when a French man marries a woman who is old enough to be his mother, we call them Mr. and Mrs. Macron. <laughs> but in our final headline this week, a 70-year-old widow, underlined widow, was recently paraded around her community and given a hefty fine of three goats in a boy state after she was caught in bed with a 30-year-old man. She reacted by buying a dozen more goats. <laughs> yeah, the journey is just beginning. Well, our culture has always supported helping widows. Let's allow adults to be adults. Don't tell an adult where to plug and charge his phone. Well, now several F reports have it that France, the UK, and other Western countries plan to ban the sale of petrol and diesel cars by 2040. Yes. The good news is not that your greedy mechanic Abiru will finally lose his job. No. The good news is that when they get rid of their petrol cars in Obodo Yibo, those millions and millions of cars will find their way here in Nigeria and will be happy to buy them cheap. <laughs> yes, I know we are happy because ordinary Nigerians like us suffer and save before we can afford a brand new, fairly used car. <laughs> That was made about 15 years ago. Let 2040 hurry up and come. Make person upgrade. But the bad news is that the ban on petrol cars will be bad market for Nigeria because oil seems to be our only export. And how is Nigeria adjusting to this reduction in global demand for oil? By pledging to search for oil and drill even more oil. So who will buy all this oil after the West moves on with renewable energy? Is it this guy? <laughs> or this other guy? <laughs> Nigeria should just wake up and smell the generator fumes. This oil business will not last much longer. Besides, who oil don't really help? 
it has polluted the Niger Delta and corrupted our politicians and put the willingness to generate revenue from other sources in a state of permanent coma. Oil money has put several oil ministers in trouble. At least one former governor in a London prison and uh, another former governor in a dress. <laughs> in fact, Nigeria's blood pressure goes up when oil prices drop and drop when oil prices go up. No wonder the first company to find oil in Nigeria was called BP. <laughs> It'd be like say oil don't give us love portion. Let us pray that Nigeria will be delivered from this addiction to oil before 2019, I mean uh, 2040. Well, let us leave oil. And now to the other matters. 1999 Constitution is a document that says we the people wrote it when in fact it was written by these people. <laughs> yes. They are the ones that wrote the Constitution. The Constitution is supposed to be a democratic manifesto. Meanwhile, those guys who wrote it we are the sort of nice guys who like to do things like this. The interim national government is hereby dissolved. The national and state assemblies are also dissolved. The state executive councils are dissolved. Well, our brain is almost dissolved. <laughs> so it is no surprise that since 1999, many people have pointed out that the constitution that we have is an imperfect one. That 1999 constitution it's a rotten constitution. Hmm. Isn't it really smell? <laughs> there have been attempts to thoroughly amend the constitution. The most famous one was cuddled when some people tried to smuggle in a clause that would have given Baba Yabo a thought them. People rejoiced, but Baba Yabo claimed that his hand was not inside. <laughs> anyway, our lawmakers have once again taken it upon themselves to amend the constitution for the good of the masses. Amendments are being sponsored by legislators <coughs> because it will either help their party, help their region, or help themselves. Okay, or uh, something like that. Anyway, I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, one of the proposed amendments was a requirement that 35% of the ministers in the federal cabinet should be women. And so realizing that women make up almost half of the population and contribute more than their fair share to national growth, the National Assembly finally voted. Those again say nay? Nay. Nay is It is no surprise. It's no surprise at all because you can't say amendment without saying men twice. Check it. The lawmakers passed a bill that would give them immunity from being sued or prosecuted for any words that they speak or write in plenary session. That is license to talk anyhow. <laughs> so I expect more of this. <laughs> in fact, they should have even gone further and given themselves immunity for doing this. <laughs> and this. And then, of course, they also passed the Not Too Young to Run bill, which reduces the age of eligibility for elective office in Nigeria to 25 years. In a totally, probably unrelated development, Senate President Saraki's son just graduated from the London School of Economics. Maybe it's a coincidence. He's also 24 years old. <laughs> sharp guy, sharp guys. Well done. Well, after making it past the National Assembly, 27 of the 36 states must pass these clauses before they will be sent to Aso Rock for presidential or maybe acting presidential assent. So who are these people who have the power to restructure our constitution? Do you know your elected representatives? Are you engaging with them? Tweet at us with the hashtag, I know my rep, and tell us who is representing you in the State House of Assembly. Use the hashtag, I know my rep and tell us how you plan to ensure that these guys pass amendments that favor you. Look, if you don't set the agenda, their own agenda might set you back. So be vigilant. We'll take a break now so I can quickly ask Google who is representing me in my State House of Assembly. But sit tight because when we return, we'll have a special Africana package for you. And I'll be talking to my guest, the formidable Florence Itagiwa, 
See you on the other side. Welcome back. It's still the other news. Yeah, we stumbled on the trailer for a new show that is just perfect for the sort of people who think Africa is a country. Here it is. Tired of CNN's Inside Africa dispelling the myth that Africa is a country? The sound of Africa on the other side of the world. And showing that Africans are not living in trees? Well, so are we. Uh, thanks for nothing, CNN. But worry no more, because this summer, we bring to you a brand new show that highlights all your favorite African stereotypes, such as singing African children, dancing African children, Africans dancing with white people. Whoa. <laughs> HIV and AIDS. What does A stand for? B. 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 C. C. Inside, inside Africa will depict Africans as exotic. Here in Southern Africa, we can play around with cow dung because our cattle only eat grass. But in some other places, their cattle eat what? Maize. And anything that eats maize, the dung is <laughs> smelly. No other show will romanticize the nation of Africa in such a patronizing way. Inside Inside Africa, produced outside Africa, but that won't stop us from acting like we know what we're talking about. Uh, the people are happy and they live as a family and they work together and they work hard and they uh, don't look like they have a hard life. Forget the sound of African cities, we take you deep into the African slums and bring to you the rhythm and the landscape. Oh, the glorious landscape. And the animals which are way more durable than people. So sit back and grab your popcorn and your long-held prejudices and enjoy the show that imagines Africa as it should be. Inside, inside Africa, coming soon. Please, we don't want inside, inside Africa. The normal inside Africa has done enough already. All right? Next, I get to interview a very, very special lady. We might as well declare this episode a tale of two vacancies. My guest today has been a senator, an advisor to a president, a force to reckon with for decades. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Senator Florence Itagiwa, also known as Mama Bakasi. Hello. You're welcome, distinguished senator. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> It's good to have you, madam. Thank you. Wow. What is the magic? How have you stayed this young? Not saying that you're old. I mean, 71 is just a number. <laughs> you're welcome, ma. Thank what, you. what is the secret? Now, when people say, how have you stayed this young? I, the question I ask me is that, is it ugly to be old? <laughs> no, no. No, you know, because the number of years I'm carrying is the number I'm carrying, you know. So it, I think it should be said, uh, why have you, how have you stayed this good? Okay. Not young. Okay. You okay. know, because nobody wants to be young, you know. See how people are struggling. Mm. Age limits. This is this, this. You know how long it took me to grow. Now, at, at some time, you blew the whistle on the theft of relief materials <coughs> meant for uh, internally displaced persons. Yeah. And today, we still have this ugly incident <coughs> bearing mm. its head. You know, what measures do you think we can put in place to prevent further theft of, you know, materials meant for people who actually need it? Number one, we need to learn to like each other. Number two, we need to have a, con a conscience. You know, and I'll say this without being derogatory, that most people that go into politics 
are totally heartless. Either they're going from a you know, background of extreme poverty, that they now get into that position and they have insatiable appetites, you know, for everything. Good. Be it money, be it food, be it this, you know. Because if people have a conscience, you understand, tell me how you can be in a position, you know, to try and, you know, alleviate, you know, the suffering people. You turn around and complicate it. And then you turn around and complicate. Exactly. Tell me how somebody can be given relief material to give to people who are suffering in the crease. You understand? Yes. Who have no roof over their heads, yes. who have no shelter, who cannot think of what next to, you know, when next they are going to get their meal. And then those things come. You turn around and, and divert and them. And turn around and divert and sell and eat. You know, some of these people who go into politics are heartless. And Nigerians believe that, you know, politicians are the, are the same irrespective of the political platform that they, they claim to belong to. Recently, you decamped into the AP, uh, APC after leaving it before. So we, people are now asking, what is new about this no, ship? No, no, that, that's, what has changed? That, that is not correct at all. Okay, please. I've never joined us. APC. Okay. You understand, number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, I was in APP with uh, President Buhari okay. many, many years ago. Mm -hmm. I never joined APC. Mm -hmm. I was in PDP. Okay. But, you know, I also need to correct that I did not decamp from PDP. Okay. It's the same impunity you are talking about. For the, before the but are you in APC now, sorry? So no, get before the presidential election, okay. I stopped mentally, emotionally being PDP. Okay. You understand? Because of the way they trample on people, because of the impunity, not for me, the young people that they took their ticket to give, they, they just put their hand in their pocket, they take ticket, they give, and they receive, take it back and give. I couldn't continue with that. Yeah. You understand? So even before the presidential election, I'd gone to President Jonathan and told him that I intended to leave the party, the party. PDP. I need to say this to Nigerians. I only stayed on in, during that presidential election because of President jo Jonathan. Jonathan, whom I supported, yeah. and my governor... Uh, Governor Yandi, whom I supported. But for the past two years, I stopped being... Okay, just to set I, the record straight, belong. if you're listening, just to set the record yes. straight, she did not decamp from PDP to APC. I have not had a party for She was partyless yes. before she went... I was went. partyless, then I now decided to, to get a platform that I believe would be useful I, I, I wouldn't me. want to say, can a politician actually be partyless, but let's just... No, you can take a break sometimes and think about where you want to go, you understand? Mm -hmm. If you, you feel that you are with a group of people that... Uh, you know, with all sense of modesty, you know, it's an embarrassment to you as a person. Yes, I, I can totally yeah. relate to that. It's the transition period between a woman leaving two relationships. You know, that period no, of I don't, rest. I don't, come on. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, no, come no. on. <laughs> <laughs> come on, okay. You know, okay. How can you treat me to life? Politics to relationship, please okay, stop no. that. Okay. See? All right. These are relationships. All right. Uh, let, let me ask Senator quickly. Yeah. <laughs> Recently, the, the Senate voted against a proposal that would have uh, guaranteed 35% for women. For me, and the reason why I'm discussing this is because they talked about appointments. Unfortunately, I do not believe in total affirmative action. Do you understand? Um, for, for women, as you call it. I believe in affirmative action with amendments. And that amendment is that only in appointee, you know, uh, uh, you know, appointed position, like ministerial, like commissioner, like DG, like all those things. And actually even 35% is small, it should be 50%. Okay. You understand? But when 50, it comes, 50. it should be 50-50 actually. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. It's 35 is not actually because all of us are working hard, all of yeah. us are contributing. Yeah. Yeah. Than, and the women of this country vote more than the men. For a woman who wants to go into politics, is it better before or after marriage? <laughs> Before, <laughs> no, you know, I, no. I think honestly, it's a good question. Yeah. Do you understand? It's a good question. You can, if you go into politics before marriage, yeah. nothing will stop you from getting married. You understand? Because um, I also, I'm a family person. Yeah. You know, so I'm, I'm speaking from experience. Women in power have are very, very good housewives and mothers. Hillary Clinton is a very good housewife and mother. Yeah. The lady in uh, Liberia, Ellen Siev, is a good housewife and mother. Point. You know, the one in London is a good wife and Thank mother. Thank you so very Should much. Should I become man. president tomorrow, I'll still be the good mother to Coco that I am and grandmother. Thank because, you. Yeah, you know, yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. All right. Talking to Senator Florence Itagiwa was truly a pleasure. It's time for a quick break. We'll bring you a special live report from Dan the Humongous in the Federal Capital Territory when we return. Sit tight or sit loose, but shall sit down and wait until the other news returns.
Welcome back. It's the other news. It's been a busy couple of weeks for legislators and executive in Abuja. For more on the goings on in the Federal Capital Territory, we turn to our senior political analyst, Dan the Humorous. Hello, Dan. How are you? Okay, how is Lagos? Well, as you know, I'm reaching you live and direct from the Federal Capital Territory uh, right wait, here. Wait, in the wait, 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 Dan. Where exactly are you? Because that does not look like the FCT that we know. No, well, okay. This is what the FCT is today, right now. It's a great jungle out here. How did this happen? Well, that's what happens when you have a gathering of exotic animals, as exotic as a type with Arabian princes. So you mean the Federal Capital Territory is now like a zoo? Mm, okay. Don't complete that word that you are planning to say. If you're talking about Z and O, -O no. At least there, you have animals that are nice, that can share biscuits with you. But here, these ones, they eat flesh, like wild animals, like serpents. So, so break it down for us. Help us understand, why is the FCT now a jungle? Well, that's what you get when you have a lion from the southwestern side of the jungle. You even have from the southern mangrove of this jungle, the white shark, aka Ofruma Pepe. They are even saying that there is even a lion also in this uh, jungle from the Kure Pride Lands. Although the people who don't like that lion say he's nothing but a fat cat. And there are so many others here. Yeah, hyenas, hyenas, tigers, wolves, chimpanzees, even monkeys and mosquitoes. So wait, so with all these animals in this jungle, mm -hmm. is there any kind of structure, hierarchy? Oh yes. Any oh, kind yes. of order? Oh yes, there is leadership in this jungle. This jungle is actually led by a lion king who took over power from the anacondas. And this was told to me by one of the zebras here in this jungle. This lion king is running things alongside some cheetahs, some wolves, and you know, other wild animals like that. But the problem, okay, is that in a long time, we haven't heard the lion roar. And this is a lion king that even the body language of this lion will make this jungle stand at attention. But right now, Lion has not roared. Wow. No, um, so is, does it mean the lion is no longer around? Or, I mean, what has uh, happened? Uh, well, yes, he's no longer around. And um, you know what they say, okay? I don't know what they say. Uh -uh. That when the lion is not away, the hyenas and jackals come out to play. And that has now, you know, left us at their mercy. We, the lesser animals. No, no, no. Talking about lesser animals, I, I, I'm not one of those animals. Well, you can keep telling yourself if it makes you feel better, but I'm telling you here that it's worse than a dog-eat-dog -dog world. Okay. Well, back to the situation in the Federal Capital Territory. Okay. Update us. Anyways, in the absence of the Lion King, the Lion Prince is running things. And I can tell you for free, the Lion Prince runs things. Things don't run him. The only concern we have about the Lion Prince is that he hangs around more with doves and pigeons. So we are not too sure if this Lion Prince can run. So, I mean, wait a minute, what's that sound? No, 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 what no. Is, what's going on there? Uh, no, don't worry yourself. It's uh, just some of the hyenas and tigers, a few owls amongst them as well. They're just having constitutional amendment in the jungle. There's nothing to worry about. Okay. We hope everyone is safe there. Yeah. Now, talking about the lion, will this lion king ever return? Oh, yes, okay. We are very, very positive that the Lion King will return. As a matter of fact, the zebras and tigers and elephants have been moving two by two to the other side of the jungle to see the Lion King like the Ark of Noah. And even the Lion Queen herself has assured us that very soon the Lion King will return. And all these uh, 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 hyenas and jackals and wolves and parasites will return to their caves and come back no more. And then we all in this jungle can now sing. Hakuna Matata, what a wonderful phrase. Hakuna Matata, ain't no passing craze. It means no worries for the resting days. Yeah, say it again. It's our problem free. Philosophy. Hakuna Matata. Oh, yes, okay. Reaching you live from the Federal Capital Jungle Territory is none other than Daniel the Humorous for the other news. And since we're in the jungle, we'll behave like them. Oh! Okay. Uh, well, 
Dan will continue to pray for you. What a show. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been the other news. Thanks to my guest, Madam Senator Itagiwa, the fantastic studio audience, and you lovely people at home. Don't forget to subscribe and follow us at the other news CTV on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube for clips and exclusive content. It's a small world. It's a small world. But you know me say you fit Trek from Yago Rich London. All right. I'll see you same time next week. I'm okay. But are you? Goodbye. Thank you.